Can you guys hear us? Okay. So, um, let's get started. Okay. Uh, let's not Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Shi Peng. Uh, I'm a software engineer at PayPal, and today I'm going to talk about create a 3D game engine for Pebble so that developers can create 3D games for Pebble Watch easily. Um, apparently, this is totally not related to my job at PayPal. Uh, it is something that I personally find very interesting and feel worth exploring on. Um, so I got my Pebble Watch around one year ago, one year and one day to be exact. Uh, I saw this from my uh, Facebook timeline yesterday. So uh, at that time, uh, my wife bought me this uh, Pebble Watch as a gift. It was awesome. And um, the watch has a color display, which is always on. And uh, there's an app store for it. You can download a lot of apps on your watch. And uh, the battery lasts for five days. That's actually very good. Not like you have to charge your uh, watch every day. That's kind of painful. And personally, I'm very into uh, 3D computer graphics. I have developed some games before for both PC and mobile platforms. And after I have the Pebble Watch, I was thinking, hey, how about create a 3D game engine for Pebble so that others can create 3D games for Pebble. That sounds interesting. So 3D game engine is still some concept that's kind of blur. Uh, so what we really need to do here is these three things. Uh, first, 3D games are basically uh, showing you a series of 3D images. So first, we need to create a generic way of rendering 3D images for Pebble. Second, it needs to be very flexible. So developers can create game logic, their rendering logic on, of, with this platform easily. And last one is high frame rates. Uh, for PC games, it's usually 60 FPS, but uh, that might be a bit hard for a watch, but still we want to have high frame rates. So these three we want to do. And this is what I am trying to achieve here. Uh, basically, <laughs> something like this. Um, but obviously, it's a bit too hardcore for a watch. And uh, uh, what I end up creating, it's uh, not this good, but something similar. Uh, and I will show you a quick demo for it. So before I go to the demo, uh, let me quickly explain what I'm going to show in the demo. Uh, so this is a 3D model, a car. And the model is, it actually looks like this. And what I want to do is, I want to display this 3D model in my watch and uh, make it rotate. Basically, uh, that's about it. It's not really a game, but it's more about uh, demonstrating the concept that it can be uh, extended to a game. Uh, and uh, this 3D model is uh, OBJ file. Uh, if you look at it uh, uh, with the text editor, you will see that the 3D model itself is actually a list of 3D coordinates, vertices, um, points like this. So what we need to do here is we need to uh, render this uh, list of vertices on our watch. So that's what we try to do. And uh, let's go back to the demo. So this is the main menu for the watch. Uh, everything here are the apps I have installed on my watch, and Pebble 3D is a demo I created. Now it's loading. Yeah, and this is what I achieved for, uh, it's pretty cool, huh? Uh, the graphics is still very simple, but uh, it, it is something very interesting. I mean, on a watch. Uh, but this video from here is actually fast forwarded a little bit. The actual speed is not so good. Uh, I'll explain more in details later. Okay, so basically this is a demo. 
Um, we want to design a 3D game engine for Pebble. So uh, usually we need to start with uh, hardware specs. And here, let's review the hardware specs for Pebble Time first. Uh, Pebble actually have several versions. And uh, the one I have is Pebble Time. So I go with this one. First, the display. I, what I really like about Pebble is it has a color display which is always on. Uh, that is very important for me. So for the display Pebble has, it's actually a sport 64 colors. It's an e-paper display. And the resolution is 144 by 168 pixels. Uh, next, next look at the processors it has. Um, the CPU for Pebble is actually a STM32. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite uh, processors for embedded systems as well. Um, it runs, it can run uh, with uh, 180 megahertz, but for Pebble, it limits it to 100 megahertz uh, because I think there are some constraints on the battery. Uh, there is also a Bluetooth module for it. And what really surprised me is that it actually has a FPGA chip on it. Uh, anyone know what is a FPGA? Cool. So uh, I didn't really look at the specs for the FPGA chip, but judging from the name, LP1K, I think it should have 1,000 slices on it, uh, which is uh, quite cool. Uh, Pebble is not open source, so I don't really know what they are doing with the FPGA, but uh, it really surprised me. And no surprise here that it doesn't have a GPU or a graphics card, uh, which I don't think ever any watch will, will have that, but it's not an issue for us. We can still build our 3D engine, even without a graphics card. OK, so next uh, we have uh, look at what the hardware specs we have. And next, let's look at the software specs. Uh, for Pebble, they actually provide us a, a lot of APIs that we can use, uh, basically two types. One is watch side APIs. Basically, you write the uh, programs, and these watch side, API, uh, these watch, uh, watch side programs will run on your watch. And there's another part, which is phone side APIs. So using these APIs, you can write the app runs on your phone. Um, and the watch side apps and the phone side apps, they can communicate with each other through uh, Bluetooth messages. For watch side APIs, uh, they have C. So you can write uh, apps in C, and they will run on your Pebble watch. And the also have JavaScript API. So uh, it's not really JavaScript, it's uh, JavaScript. Uh, basically, it's JavaScript for IoT, which is designed by Samsung. And there's also phone side APIs. So you write, so this code will run on your phone, basically. Uh, they have JavaScript version, iOS version, and Android version. Pebble also has a cloud IDE. Uh, which is very simple to use. You don't really need to install anything. Go to this website. Uh, you can just create an app there. And the, it, it's really amazing that there's a run button. You just click the run button. It will open an emulator inside the browser. And you can see the result uh, in real time, basically. Uh, that's very cool. But sometimes this cloud IDE is not very stable, so there's also uh, local version. You can inst install the Pebble SDK on your local and uh, it will work as well. So I'll just quickly show you um, how to run it on your local. So it creates an emulator here. Installing the app and it's running. Yeah, this is the same uh, result as you see just now, but it's running in the emulator. Uh, this is uh, a little bit bigger than the previous one. But OK.
Okay, so we already know about the hardware specs and the software specs. So let's design a 3D game engine for Pebble. And before we do that, let's review our goals again, just in case if we forgot anything important. Uh, we need to have a generic way of rendering 3D images. It should be flexible, and we want to have high frame rates. And to do that, we can do it in two ways. Uh, just like what Pebble APIs provided us, we can have the phone side rendering or watch side rendering. So for phone side rendering, what we're doing is we uh, create some app on your phone and that app will read all the 3D vertices and generate a 3D image for you and send the image over to your phone to display. Uh, that is uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, um, there's another way you can do this. It's by watch side rendering, which you need to send the 3D vertices to a watch and your watch will process the uh, uh, 3D vertices and generate a 3D image. Uh, from these vertices. Both ways should work. And before we actually uh, jump into these uh, implementations, uh, there are something we should uh, know from this. So for phone side rendering, it's uh, obviously your phone has more computing power than your watch. So the rendering image on your phone should not be much of an issue. But for sending image over to watch to display, that part, we might have some issue because it's using Bluetooth, and Bluetooth is not famous for uh, high speed. And rendering on your watch side, there might be some limitation on the vertices because uh, although Pebble has a very powerful CPU, um, for each app, you only have 24K to program. So that's actually a limitation there. So let's look at phone side rendering first. So what phone side rendering does is actually something like this. Uh, we have the 3D model on your phone and the phone uh, read the vertices and renders the 3D image and then we send the image over to uh, your watch to display. Basically, these three steps are pretty straightforward. And uh, let's look at the Pebble display again. Uh, we already know that it is 144 by 168 pixels. Um, for each pixel, it's actually represented by a byte. And a byte is 8 bits, right? And for these uh, 8 bits, they have two bits for red channel, two bits for green, and two bits for uh, blue. So two times six is 64. So that's how it supports 64 colors. And there's also two bits for alpha, uh, but it's not used in Pebble actually. So let's do some calculation here. Uh, each pixel will take one byte and uh, two bit red, two bit green, two bit blue. The display resolution is 144 by 168. So one image frame will actually take around uh, 24 KB, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot of data to transmit actually. Just 24K, how, how hard is that? And let's look at the Pebble Bluetooth module again. Uh, it has a TI Bluetooth module. Uh, it supports both Bluetooth 2.1 and Bluetooth 4 LE, but the Bluetooth, the BLE one is just for uh, notifications. So it's, we cannot use it for our use case. So we need to use the Bluetooth 1.1. And for that one, the max data rate is around 3 Mbps. Uh, so let's translate that to KB, so that's around 360 KB. Uh, but this is uh, like the maximum value because uh, in the data rates, the bits are not just the information you need, 
There are also information for uh, checksum or baseband encoding, stuff like that. So not every bit you can use, but maximum it should be uh, 360 KB around that per second. And one image frame, uh, we already saw this previously, that's 24K. Uh, hey, great, we can get 10 frames per, per second. That's actually quite okay for, not so okay for PC game, but it should be okay for watch game. So I implemented that, and when I launched the app, this is what I got. Uh, actually, it's stuck here. It's, 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 stuck here. Uh, it's not moving. And I, there is actually a function in Pebble that you can determine what's the maximum uh, buffer size that you can send through Bluetooth within one message. It says 8K, but I tested it. Uh, maximum I can send is just 1.8K. Uh, <laughs> might be something wrong with their Pebble OS, but it's not open source, so I don't really know. I mean, nobody would know what's happening there unless you're from Pebble. Yeah, that's a bad part about it uh, not being open source. So what I have to do is something <laughs> like this, uh, kind of painful. So I have to send one image frame in uh, 16, uh, 14 messages. So you see the blocks here, the red one, green one. So each time I can just send one block to the watch. And each time I send the block to the watch, uh, the watch, uh, after receiving this block of data, they will increase some counter and request the next block to for from the phone, and the phone will send it over, and repeat this process for 14 times. We get one frame of image, which uh, it's it, it's going to be very bad. But how bad it is, uh, let's let's see. Okay, so I already talked about the sending image uh, to your watch, this part. The next part is actually 3D rendering. So somebody needs to render a 3D image for us, right? So we need to do this 3D rendering part. Uh, I'm using Pebble Kit JS, uh, so it's basically JavaScript that's running on your phone. Um, beside the pure JavaScript part, it also has some uh, extensions on it. It supports uh, things like WebSocket, uh, HTTP request, geolocation, and local storage. Uh, but again, no surprise here, it does not support WebGL. So uh, without a WebGL, how do we generate a 3D image for, with JavaScript? Uh, actually, that's also fine because we can create uh, our own WebGL with pure JavaScript. Um, it's actually not so hard as it sounds. Um, so uh, let's look at this dolphin. It's a 3D dolphin. Um, it's a 3D bottle, basically. So if we look at it closely, we'll see that it's not a dolphin. It's actually a group of tri triangles. Uh, so, let's say if we have something really complicated like this bunny here, uh, if uh, we, we want to show this bunny in 3D but we only have triangles, what we can do is we just keep adding more triangles to it. And if we have enough number of triangles, it will look, at, look like a realistic bunny here. So. That's the same thing we're going to do. Um, for the 3D renderer we create, we actually just need to have one function to draw a triangle. And with that, we can do everything we want. And although these 3D models are in 3D, but our screen, our display is always in 2D, right? So ultimately, every 3D triangle will be mapped to a 2D triangle. 
So actually, what we really need to do is to have a function to draw a 2D triangle. That's pretty simple, right? And that process is called uh, rasterization. Um, I won't go into details how to do it, but basically you have a 2D triangle here, and you want to draw it on the uh, uh, screen, but your, your display uh, uh, your display are, are, are created with these pixels, right? So basically you need to have a function to draw a triangle into something, map it to something on your display. That's all we need to do actually. And let's say we already have this function to draw a 2D triangle on your display. Well, the, the, the rest we need to do are very simple. So. Here's, here is a graphics pipeline that uh, uh, normally all the 3D applications will follow this way. And same for the 3D renderer I created for Pebble. So it's a graphics pipeline like this. Uh, first, uh, we have a 3D model, right? And the 3D model will be uh, actually a list of 3D triangles. And um, then there's some processing on each vertex and we map it to a screen space, which is in 2D. And after we have that, we draw this 2D triangle on the, to the display. Basically, that's all we need to do. And um, uh, if you're familiar with OpenGL, actually the vectors processing part, uh, it's also called uh, vertex shader. And the fragment processing part is also called uh, fragment shader. Um, these, uh, okay. For texture part, I didn't include it in this demo because uh, Pebble Watch, it only supports 64 colors, which uh, is not so colorful. So uh, I didn't include texture in it, but um, uh, I have the, the demo with textures with JavaScript here. Uh, it's, it's actually a previous talk for JS talk. Uh, and thanks to engineers at SG, uh, they also recorded it. So if you're interested, you can check this link out. And Yeah, the size here is actually the same as uh, Pebble Watch, uh, but this one I added the uh, texture into it, so it looks like it looks better. But ultimately, it's the same thing that I have on the watch. Okay, so now let's look at the performance. Uh, I have added some logs to the rendering and the sending data over part. Uh, as you can see here um, in the red box, send, uh, the 3D rendering part actually just took around uh, 240 milliseconds, which is still okay. But sending the buffer over, it took eight seconds. So it means that if you're playing a game with this system, you need to wait six seconds for each frame update, uh, which is not really tolerable. And um, oh, this is tested with real device, um, uh, with iPhone 6S and Pebble Time. So how can we improve this? I think there should be better solutions than this, but uh, the most straightforward way would be just reduce the image resolution, right? So uh, originally, we are sending an image with a resolution of 144 by 168. Uh, and that would require 24 KB of data. So let's reduce the size. Uh, if, let's say, reduce the size to uh, 36 by 42 pixels, uh, what the data we really need is just 1.5 KB. And that's less than 1.8. So yeah, so with, after reduce the resolution, 
we can send the image in one message, which is great. But uh, because of the resolution is so much lower than previously, the image won't look as nice. So here is a demo recorded in real time. Uh, so there's no fast forwarding for this. It looks like this. Yeah, uh, the, it looks like something from Super Mario because uh, it's very, uh, the resolution is very bad. Uh, but the performance is much better uh, for 3D rendering part because the image size is reduced. It takes less time to render the image. So previously, it's uh, 240 milliseconds. Now it's just 130 milliseconds. And for sending the buffer, previously we need to do it in 14 messages. And now we can send everything at once. Uh, so the sending image part, it will only take around uh, 400 milliseconds. So overall, we will get something like two FPS, uh, two frames per second. Uh, which is not that good, but still okay for a watch game, I guess. Uh, yeah, but again, the result will be not so good as the previous one. On the uh, left side, it's with full resolution. On the right side, it's uh, reduced resolution. Uh, you can see the difference, and here as well. Yeah, but. Okay, so next, um, watch side rendering. Um, I didn't really have enough time to finish this part. Uh, I did some experiments on it, uh, but it's not finished actually. So like I mentioned before, uh, Pebble, they also support JavaScript running on your watch side with JavaScript support, JavaScript support. But it, the JavaScript is not running very well, actually. The performance is quite bad. So uh, when I port my uh, phone side code to watch side, uh, it compiles. And when I run it, I always get these uh, memory warnings. So the app crash, the emulator crash. Uh, so I guess for this case, we still have to use C for these kind of high performance applications. Um, there's actually one app from uh, Pebble App Store that's doing this. Uh, this is rendered with watch side rendering. Um, frame rate is much better, I think. Uh, from the screenshot I got here, it looks like 3 FPS to 4 FPS, uh, which is quite OK. And, um, uh, but the bad part for this is you only have 24K to program for your Pebble. So there will be a limitation on the geometry part. For this app, it says there will be a limitation on uh, 300 vertices. Uh, while the app, uh, the demo I created, the model has uh, 6,000 plus vertices. So uh, there's always uh, trade-offs and compromises. Okay, so um, summary. Uh, this is our this is the goals we listed at the beginning of the talk. Uh, we want to have a generic way of rendering 3D images for Pebble. Check, we did that. Uh, it's flexible. Check, we did that. But high frame rates, I put a question mark here because uh, two frames per second maybe not that high. So. Uh, but again, there are ways to improve this. You can, uh, so now each pixel takes one byte. Maybe you can reduce it to one bit per pixel, something like that. Or we can do some other stuff to, to make it better. Uh, that's definitely possible. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Questions? 
Did you try to send only image diffs instead of sending the full bitmap every time? Just send a diff of what change that might reduce your latency a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that should work. But uh, I I didn't try that because. Uh, it's really a side project and don't really have that much of time. But uh, yeah, if I try that, the performance will be much better. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued by the, uh, the FPGA. Mm -hmm. I had a quick look while you were speaking. There's a li it's a line of about five different models. Okay. And the number of cells in each model is equal to the number of horizontal pixels in each HD video mode. Oh. So it looks an awful okay. lot like it's a they're set up to be uh, line of time video output devices. Okay. I, I don't know anything about people, but I wonder if they could be encouraged to be a little more open about what's happening there, because you would, you've got a very powerful machine there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do yeah, yeah. Uh, to triangle rendering. Yeah, it's full information. Yeah, yeah and uh, actually, if they can open source the design, maybe we can do a lot of cool stuff with it. It has a PGA chip on it, it has a very powerful CPU, and yeah, they really should open source it. Oh, making a Super Mario game after that? <laughs> um, Super Mario, I think actually, I think there's already a Super Mario for Pebble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Can you do a video compression or something like that? Uh, yeah, but video compression, um, you need to uh, uh, compress it, and then on your watch, you need to decompress it, and that part might take a while, so, sorry? The codec itself will decompress yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the codec, codec itself will take time. <laughs> questions, questions, questions? No? So I'm curious about the uh, application. You said it was 24K per application. So yeah. yeah. Code and data. Uh, yeah. yeah. Code and data. Cozy. Yeah, so that's why if you do the watch side rendering, you would definitely have a lot of limitations on the uh, geometry part. Yeah. Yeah. You want to overclock the. Overclock. Yeah. Um, I. Uh, and see you know, whether, of course, some of the NOSPI bursts were available, maybe some people. Were there some sort of development kit associated with that watch? Um, sorry, I cannot hear you properly. Were there some uh, development kit? No, there is no development kit for Pebble. Um, and it's not open source, so you don't really know what it's doing inside it. And um, yeah, overclocking might be work, but you need to do something hacks on it. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you.